Hey everybody, what's happening? What's going on? What are you doing? What hand are you doing it with? What are you going to do when you're done doing it? I'm Dan Shinder here. Dan Shinder here on Drum Talk TV live on the Drum Talk TV Facebook page with my guest today, Chip Ritter. Chip is coming to us from Tucson, Arizona. I'm about an hour and 45 minutes north in Globe, Arizona. We'll get together in person, Chip, and do this soon. Uh, but welcome everybody. Tell us where you're watching from and Chip. How are you doing? Tell everyone how you're doing while I bring us up on the monitor. I'm doing, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing better than I have in a long time. Dude, things are kind of popping and busy, and I might be a little too busy. My girlfriend's a little, she got upset the other day. I was like, I'm working on the internet. I'm working on the internet. She's like, you know what, dude, pay attention to me. And so I was like, <laughs> I got to kind of back off a little, to be honest. But things have been going really good, man. That's great. Yeah. Uh, when you're a working musician and a working music educator, um, and, and an entrepreneur, or if you got a corporate job, or whatever it is, and you got to, life is a balancing act, and it's all yeah. about just the right balance. And we don't want to ignore the ones that not only we love, but those who support us. And for folks who are in the arts, you know how important it is to have people uh, that we surround ourselves with who actually support what we do. If I, I couldn't do what I do without my wife's support. Plus, she's my boss. That's another story. <laughs> well, awesome. So, for those of you, and there's probably only about four, who are not familiar with what Chip does, I'm actually going to pull up a video, and Chip, you won't see this or hear this, I'm going to play a okay. real quick video, give sure. people an idea of uh, what you got going on. Hopefully, I'll click on the right button here. Let's make sure. That's not it. Let's click on the other one. Here we go. Here's Chip Ritter letting it rip. Ready, folks? Check uh, this out. Now. Yeah, of course. Part of the ones that not only we love. There we go. Here we go. Check this out. something before we get into the discussion of stick juggling and everything i gotta let people know that first of all i don't want anyone hating on this stuff here okay we foster a positive environment and i know that there's a lot of people that hate on stuff that they can't do and i'll be the first to say i cannot twirl a stick to save my life i can throw a stick 20 feet in the air and catch it most of the time, but I cannot twirl sticks. And it amazes me when I see people like Zoltan Chaney, Tommy Lee, Ricky Rock, and some big fans of Chip Ritter, and then of course Chip Ritter grabbing the third stick, juggling, and keeping time and playing a beat. It's like I can't get my head around that. So it's all in fun, and of course it's all about the groove, and it's all about music first. And Chip's going to talk about that because he's got a great new product coming out that does talk about that. But at first, Chip, let's kind of jump around out of order your okay. musical journey, kind of starting with um, starting with juggling six. First of all, who did you see, if it was someone that you saw do that, that inspired you? And then how did you start walking that tightrope and falling down to the net, climbing back up the pole, walking the rope, falling down onto the... Like, tell us about the process of how you got so good at this and what was the inspiration. The first time I attempted to juggle drumsticks had nothing to do with other drummers. It really had to do with a great friend of mine called Two Feathers that was my sponsor and really good friend in, in uh, sobriety. And I was really depressed and got broken up with a girlfriend. I was up in Seattle going through a drum off, getting ready to do a drum off with my metal band. But I was really depressed. And he said, I want you to find a young picture of you when you were four years old, five years old, whatever. 
before life got to you. And then I put that on the mirror and tell that kid that you love it every day. And I also want to think about when's the last time you were blissfully happy with no motive and no benefit, no money, no people. When was you when what when were you really happy? And I had to go so far back. But I remembered a moment in my grandmother's backyard during Christmas where I was trying to juggle these little bean bags. And I remembered here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa. I figured out how to juggle them in time. And I just geeked out. I was blissful. I was blissful. And that was the moment I went back to. And That's it really great. helped get me out of a depression. And what happened was, because that drum off was coming, I kind of thought, what if I could juggle sticks? How cool would that be? And I tried to do it on my bed, and I kind of got pretty good at it. And then I went and I uh, failed all over the place in front of everybody um, young drummers, like just head cutters were at the competition. The only judge that didn't basically boo me was Dave Abrusais from Pearl Jam, who oh. came up to me. He came up to me after I was outside in the parking lot and I was like crying. I was devastated. And, and he was like, dude, listen, man, don't pay attention to him. Do what you're doing. Believe in what you're doing. Whatever it is you're doing, just believe in it. Follow your bliss and you're going to make it. And then years later, I ended up on Letterman. I'm at the NAMM show in like 2014. And out of nowhere, Dave Abrusais wants to be my friend on Facebook. And I freaked out. I was like, oh, my God, you <laughs> changed my life. You know, yeah. and uh, that's really how it started. And it, it's been a long process to kind of get it to where I can actually do it in public. It took a long time. But I ended up making a DVD about it through Mel Bay called Stick Tricks. People can still find that. And uh, I, I teach it to this day. I'm looking at other drummers that juggle. I'm kind of connected to them now. Uh, Jabril, the super drummer that's been on your show, he just gave us yeah. a big shout out for an event we were doing. And uh, I don't know, man, it's just been kind of cool. I don't know. I really love it. And uh, I'm going to continue to juggle as long as the crowd appreciates it and claps for it, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. And what I, love, what I personally love the most about it Unlike a lot of people who hate on stuff they can't do, I'm fascinated by it. Just like uh, blast beats and speed drumming or something, that music isn't exactly my thing, but when I see <laughs> drummers do it, like James Payne and oh, other yeah. drummers that are so good at it, it fascinates me. I think it's have wonderful. You, Dan, I love it. Dan, have you, have you heard of a kid named Anthony Barone? I don't think I have. Head cutter. Oh, my God. Go I'll check him out. He is one of the most ridiculous of the new breed of those speed guys. And I can't begin to play like that kid, but I'll watch him for a half an hour going. Oh, oh that's, that's great. great. He's I'll, an amazing drummer. I'll look, I'll look him up. up. I, I love, love that stuff. stuff. And, and when I see yeah. you juggle and playing <laughs> and keeping time, you know, playing. Time the is the most important thing. Yeah. And, and playing drums in time is one brain division anyways you know but to juggle and do that is just to me it's amazing i love to Thanks, see man it. yeah no, that's really cool um and you did do some stuff at the nam show we posted a video of that that, that thank has you done really well yeah and it's, it's just great to see that so how can people get your products like the what you have on the Bay, I'm sure they get on Bay, but you have some things on your drum site at is chipper.com yeah chipper.com is my official website please go follow me hook it up with the social stuff and email me RitterMethod at gmail.com if you want an inside scoop on some of the really cool stuff we're doing but basically what happens is they go to my website and they can get a free ebook which was my first book I ever wrote called the Ritter Method Right. What's interesting about that book, Dan, is I wrote down in 2000, one of my students in Phoenix, Don Kasselbrock, is a pilot for Southwest Airlines. When I when I signed with Trick Drums, I gave him my Mapex drum set. Oh, and, wow. and he told me, I said, man, I'm thinking about writing a book. I always wanted to. And he said, you know what? You should. You, you have valuable information to share with the world. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. And I wrote down in my experience in my touring professional life, up to that point, I wrote down everything I was doing. I shared my opinions and, you know, I cringe at it today because I probably would have reworded some of it, but it's a wealth of information. If you're trying to find out how I got where I'm at, go get that book and get the free copy of uh, inspiration about how important inspiration is. You remember Jennifer Batten that played with Michael Jackson? Sure, yeah. Her motto was stay inspired at all costs. Yeah, And uh, I remember yeah. auditioning for her band through a cassette tape, and she called my Wait, cell. wait, what's, what's a cassette tape? Yeah, no. right? <laughs> I have some on the shelf, actually, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
right there. <laughs> she, called my, she called my cell phone and said, hey, Chip, this is Jennifer Batten here. You got some stanky feet, man. Unfortunately, we already found a drummer, but blah, 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 blah. But I remember the day that happened, and her her, mod, her motto was stay inspired at all costs. There's a free ebook on my website right now called Inspiration, which is a portion of the book. Just go get it and support the cause, and that will give me your email, and I'll be able to stay in touch from there. Yeah, and that's let awesome. about my new book. You know, my new book called Stick Tricks and Showmanship, I'm trying to get it out by March 22nd. And uh, I don't know, it's just, you know what, I'm talking about stick tricks, I'm teaching them. I'm yeah. also trying to make sure, Dan, like we talked about earlier before we came online, that, that my drummer students know, I mean, people out there kind of take a look at me juggling and they go, blah, 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 whatever, this is a circus, you know, like. Yeah. But, but, but a lot of them are missing the point. You're seeing me juggle during the section of the performance that I'm juggling. You didn't see me last night spend three hours playing a shuffle without a stick coming up until the finales, you know? Right, exactly. Time, I'm a working drummer. Yeah. And uh, I, try to, I try to tell people like that because guys will go on the forums and they'll be like, oh, what is this, a circus? And yeah. I'll just sit there and think to myself, dude, you just told me you paid $200 to go see Motley Crue ride around on a roller coaster with flamethrowers. <laughs> Which is great, but... Don't, Which is showmanship. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's all part of the show. And and think about this, Dan. When's the last time you saw a drummer play with Britney Spears or Justin Timberlake? Like, you don't right. see the drummer there. Right. You know what I mean? And they record music with drum machines. So yeah. we got to do something to get back on the map and get these people playing the instrument again. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with having fun playing drums. There's nothing wrong... Hey. With dude, showmanship. Yeah. And dude, uh, the Casey Cooper, I'm a big fan of that guy, dude. Yeah. He's got some videos of him playing with sticks on fire. You know, yeah. he's having a great time and he's inspiring people to pick up the instrument, which is another thing, you know, that that's goes in goes in hand in hand with the event that I wanted to tell you about the, the Battle of the Beats thing. Yeah, let's talk about that. OK, we're going to do we're doing this Battle of the Beats. My friend Christy Davis and Clay Reed from Tucson put on this event for the last three years in a row. And the last two years, it was kind of, it was cool. It was open to 21 and up and all that. And this year, Christy said she wanted to do it for a charity to benefit the Primavera Foundation. And she wanted to have it at a bigger venue and do an all ages thing. And I said, all ages, charity, I'm all in, you know? Yeah. And like, I thought immediately, like my students could be involved and we could get anybody at all that wants to play drums. And what we've been doing is they've been doing these auditions for the last month and trying to get scored, like just like a drum off, they get scored on uh, technique, groove, musicianship, and originality, and we score them. And so they're going. What they're doing now, today, as a matter of fact, is going through the scores, and the highest scoring ones are going to get to compete if they're in the competitive level. And the right. ones that aren't really ready to compete, you know, like the younger ones, they're going to be in a showcase level. If their score is high enough, they're going to be invited to Club Congress on March 30th to get up on the real drum sets with the real PA in front of a real crowd and just rock out for a minute and 30 seconds by themselves. It's oh, going to wow. be awesome. And yeah. this is down in Tucson? In Tucson on March 30th at Club Congress. And Rainbow he Guitars presents the 2019 Battle of the Beats. And Dan, I've had like, there's been so many rock stars that have been like, what can we do? And I've yeah. been like, dude, give me a shout out. And they've recorded video shout outs for it. Yeah. Like Tommy Lee and Ricky Rocket and Rich Redman and Ray Luzier. Yeah. And all these just amazing guys have, have given their time. And I'm just so grateful. It's been overwhelming. And Pisces awesome. with us and, um, you know, Trick Drums has been helping. Aquarian Drumheads, Humesenberg Cases, Agner Drumsticks. Everybody's jumped in and helped support the cause. And I'm so grateful, man. That's great. Are you going to have videos of the winners? We're going to absolutely have videos of the winners. And I think that we're also going to do, um, we're going to do like some live stuff during the event too. Great. So our friends can check it out. And it all goes to a good cause. Oh, I forgot. Todd Zuckerman from Styx. Yeah. He was like, I was like, can I get a shout out? And he goes, hold on a second. And I'm like, hold on a second. I got mad. I was like, he's not going to give me a shout. I can't believe he wouldn't <sighs> give me a shout. Out. And then he emailed me. He said, I'm sending the office something. What's your address? And I was like, okay. And he sent me a guitar signed by Styx to wrap nice. off to benefit the charity. Oh, that's Todd great. Zuckerman, dude. That's so great. cool. And it's March 30th, right? Yeah, it's March 30th. And uh, okay. and I can't, I'm, there's, everybody is on the flyer. The sponsors are mentioned on the flyer. Great. And there's, there's information on my Facebook and stuff. And 
Jesse James Tucker from Tucson Rising Phoenix has been a great local sponsor and helping me lose weight. And I mean, everybody's just kind of coming together to help the cause and promote drumming. So it's kind of like it's a win win. If you like drumming yeah. and you like helping a charity, a cause, then this is a no brainer. And what's the tell us about the charity? Who does it benefit? The charity is called the Primavera Foundation, and they're from Tucson, Arizona. Okay. They've been here for years, and what they basically do is help people get off the streets. They oh, have, like, cool. these rehabilitation program for the homeless people that are nice. on the streets, and they kind of get guys back up into the system. That's it's right. Really and is it, it, is it just for the – I'm just curious. Is it just for the area of Tucson, or is it a nationwide organization? Oh, man, embarrassingly enough, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't know. I think That's okay. I think well, it's Tucson. You'll look it up and let us know. That's all I good. will. Primavera. I'll, I'll come back and post a comment for him. Great. And I and, will uh, mail you a, uh, I'll mail you a drum head with dude, some Drum Talk TV guest signatures. Dude, that would be so raffle. cool. Thank you, man. We'll sure. absolutely enjoy raffling that. That'd be awesome, yeah. man. Thank so you. it, the drum head used to be worth about ten thousand dollars, but then I signed it. Now it's worth like eight <laughs> bucks. Get what you can for it. No. <laughs> we, got, we had a Heather Heather and Autumn, my stepdaughter Autumn was uh, in the kitchen and we opened up one of the boxes we sent. It was from Ray Luzier from Corn. Yeah. And there were like heads that were signed and sticks that were signed and they both freaked out in the kitchen. I was like, yeah, <laughs> the drummer from Corn, dude. That's it was great. so awesome. I'll send you some goodies for sure. Thank you, man. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let's talk about something you mentioned earlier when you were referring to someone else, and that was picking up the instrument. What was your inspiration to become a drummer and not a tuba player or a guitar player? Or for all I know, you play guitar and tuba. I don't know. Or a dentist or a welder or a lawyer or a doc. What was it that said drummer? I've had, I, I've, had a, I've had this question before, and I really only recently realized the truth of this. Before, I used to say I saw Buddy Rich and Animal on the Muppets, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But what the, the truth is, before I even saw that episode, my dad, one day out of nowhere, pulled a magazine out and he said, here, pick one. Because it was a 99 cent deal where you got to buy 99 albums and for a penny or something. Yeah. And, and he had run out of choices. He needed one more to fill out the order because my dad used to always enter contests and stuff. Uh -huh. And he looked at he showed it to me and he said, pick one. And I was like, and I saw the Kiss Destroyer album cover. Oh. And all I know, all I remember was fire, clown faces, <laughs> other, and I pushed that one. And the tape came in the mail, and I listened. And I heard, I heard the drumming of. You really like my limousine, <laughs> and I was just like, whoa! How what old is were you? that? Oh man, seven. Okay, cool. That's when I started. I started playing when I was seven. I just, I couldn't stop. And then what ended up happening was then Buddy Rich and the Animal, I started wanting to be a drummer. I kept being told to be quiet, calm down, sit down, be quiet, calm down. <laughs> be, right? I was, I was ADHD TV before we knew what that was. <laughs> and then I was at a football game, football game when my brother's marching band was out there. And here's this big drum line. And it's going, shoo, 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 shoo. and I'm looking up at all the grand, all the old people are going, they're laughing and it's so loud and I was like, I that's what I want to do. Wow! And what did I was your like, brother I'm too play? Loud, but that's okay. I'm gonna be a drummer. Right. <laughs> what did your brother play? My brother played trumpet. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so, did you tell your parents at that point you wanted to be a drummer? Yeah, I was basically like, I'm gonna go be a professional drummer. And my mom and my dad and my brother were laughing. And I said, no, I'm really going to be a professional drummer. And my mom was like, okay, that's nice, but what are you going to fall back on? And I remember looking at her going, what do you mean fall? Yeah. I'm going to go be a drummer. And then the only person that believed in me was my grandmother. And oh. she pulled me aside one time in my kitchen, and she held my hand and pat. She goes, Chris, honey, Chris, listen to me. Listen to me. You can be whoever you want to be. And if you want to be a drummer, just remember, all the best entertainers had that one thing that set them apart. Find your one thing, honey. I believe in you. And it was so funny when that one day came flash forward to Seattle. I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. <clears throat> I remember the juggling. I tried juggling, and then, bam, I got my one thing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah was bless cool. her heart. That's awesome. Did, if you don't mind me asking, did your parents, were they able to see you bring this dream to fruition and become yes. an educator? Yes, the, the, the big... 
I talked with a, uh, a parent of one of my private drum students in Tucson at the Battle of the Beach yesterday. The, the child was scared about it and intimidated and didn't want to go play. But the whole family was like, come on, just go play. It's, you know, you can't lose. Just go play. You can drop the stick, pick it up, and still play. It's fine. I do that all the time, by the way. Right? Me too. Me too. Yeah. And so I was trying to get him to play just so he could have that experience. Right. And, uh, and I told him this, and I almost, I'm, I'm going to cry telling you this story. But the one regret I have in my life, one regret, man, was when my grandmother and grandfather and everybody wanted me to play the drum set they just got me for Christmas for my grandfather. They said, play for your grandfather. He really wants to see you play. And I was like, no. And I wouldn't do it. And uh, then he left. And you know what? He passed away. He never got to see me play. Uh, that's the that's the one regret I have, man. Yeah. That's well, the one regret I'm I have. I'm sure he's seen all this from somewhere else. And he's extremely I feel proud. like he has. Yeah. I, you know, and my mom passed away last December. And some for last couple months, I really feel like she's a part of all this stuff, too. That's cool. awesome. And yeah. we're going to talk to Chip more about his musical journey. And while we're doing so, folks... Please chime in with any questions you might have. And in a few minutes, I'm going to check the comments. We'll see if there's any questions. Um, okay. and, and so, Chip, kind of fast forward from there. You ended up getting in drumline in school, yeah. right? Was that like junior high or high school? That was junior high. I played two bass drums. I had bought another drum set from my teacher, Brad Seibert. <clears throat> who invented True Line Sticks, who I didn't know until I got signed to True Line Sticks. Oh, <clears throat> cybernized drumsticks got bought by true line uh -huh. and uh, they had this cool diamond grip and anyway i played the, i played in eighth grade at gridley junior high and the seniors from saguaro we went and played the high school at saguaro high school and me and sam did this neil pert feel doo -doo 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 -doo, tom sawyer and i did the quads because i had double bass drums and i went <laughs> and all the seniors looked behind the curtain went whoa and <laughs> And because they went, whoa, like that, I thought, man, I want to be like those guys. I want to hang out with those guys. They were on the snare line. So I practiced. I asked my teacher, Brad, to help me get ready for snare. And he put me on a little crash course. And I got I got good enough. And I got in on the quads. I didn't have to audition on the bass drum. I went right to quads. Usually wow. you have to go through cymbals and bass drum first when you right. enter a drum line. Right. But I have practiced. So, you know, it's like my, you know, it's like my teacher helped me cheat, Dan, you know, yeah. and. It's funny that people talk like that, but I've even heard people talk about like during the Battle of the Beats competition, some outside drummers, you know, when they get negative and they lose the competition, whatever, you can hear this stuff like, oh, it's because it's Chip's student. And I'm like, well, then good. He's doing great. Yeah. Our plan is working. Right. He's right. taking lessons. He's getting better. And the results are obvious. And that's so the whole why idea. is that a bad, how is that cheating taking lessons? How is, you know, yeah. whatever. But I took lessons, got on the drum line, went into my high school phase of drinking too much and got into <laughs> drugs and whatever. But I was the lead snare throughout the whole varsity section of high school. And then we moved into a jazz band in Alta Loma, California. I went for my senior year again and joined the jazz band. One of my, a great teacher I had was uh, Pat. And uh, he used to tell me like, you know, I don't know. You know, there's an interesting thing about that. One of the the other drummer was a senior in Alta Loma. His name was Sonny. And he used to play. And you know how in jazz band, have you been in jazz band in high school? Yeah, yeah, I was. Okay. Actually, in junior high. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember when you would sat there and the other drummer was playing maybe and you had to sit there and watch them go through the whole thing? And then they'd be like, da, 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 for like what felt like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably five minutes, but yeah. <laughs> right? And then the band director would go, oh, hold on, stop. <clears throat> Horns, let's take it from level C. And then you'd be like, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So while they were doing that, Sonny would turn around and he, like, flipped the drumstick off the snare. And I was like, whoa. And one day he did that. I already was ready for it because I knew he was going to goof off with me in class. And we're, we were class clowns. And I pulled out a notebook paper that had a big 10 written on it. And I gave him a 10. <laughs> I gave him a 10 for his flip off the snare. And then in the garage, I was practicing. I thought, wouldn't it be cool? Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if you could throw this gig behind your yeah. back and catch it in front of you? Yeah. I said, I, I just kept practicing it until I could do it. And then I did it in front of Sonny. And he was like... 
and he went and held up a 13. It was really cool. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that was where the backflip came from, man. It was awesome. That's cool. Yeah, Carl Palmer has been doing that forever, and I've always... A backflip? Yeah. Yeah, wow, check, I haven't seen like, that. Yeah, check it out. Look up on Drum Talk TV. Go to the videos album and look up Carl Palmer drum solo. And, and I'm going to go check that. that out. And he still does it. It's it's amazing. My friend Jeff Wilson saw him play at a big clinic thing he did, and he said he threw the drumstick way up in the air, and then he like put the other stick down while the stick was up in the air, and then he took his hands and he went like this and caught the stick. Yeah, he's, he, he's he was like amazing. That's awesome. So how? Talk about how playing a drum line has affected your playing on drum set. Um, well, I, I hate to say it, but I gotta say it. Selfish yeah. plug. Uh, sure. Snare Force One. I wrote Snare Force One with Mel Bay in 2011. I right. worked on it for three years with a drummer named Todd Carrasco, who does lines in Colorado, and Scott Johnson from the Blue Devils. Right. And uh, Scott Johnson, if you don't know, from DCI, is the Hall of Famer. He's about as big as you can get in drumline. Yeah. And uh, he helped us with this book, and we put that together. The purpose of Snare Force One is to put that in any drummer's hand by the time, if they follow the instructions in the book and the DVD, by the time the book's over, they know how to read music. Wow. It wasn't really marketed, Dan, and I'm not going to say that against Mel Bay, but, you know, things are weird, like how the industry is, and it's kind of like the ice forms over the top, and, the, you know, yeah. that's, I look back on a friend of mine talked to me about uh, how Drumline affected their drumming, and Drumline has only made my drumming better. It's only made it cleaner. There's a, a good friend of mine named Thomas just started running the U of A, Pride of Arizona, the big Drumline at the college U of A, yeah. uh, the Arizona Wildcats here in town. It's his first year teaching the line, and he he and I had lunch the other day, and we talked about this, and I asked him, why are the drum corps guys always seeming to be like there's this divide between the drum corps guys and the drum set guys? And he was yeah. like, you know what, I don't know, but they seem, Sorry. They, seem, they seem more competitive. And I thought, you know what, maybe they are, because in drum line, what I remember was you had to beat out everybody if you wanted to get first chair. You had to beat them out. Right. You had to audition, and it was a full-on competition. Yeah. I see drum teachers put a post on memes that say drumming is not a competition. You know, and I keep I think okay, I get that. I get that it's but not a competition. But even even in concert band and orchestra, you have to test, and it's a competition yeah. to become first chair, second chair, second chair, or whatever. You can't you can't get to first chair on the line without competition? Yeah. And uh, I think some of that, to some extent, is healthy. I think what they're talking about, maybe maybe I'm missing the point, but what they're trying to get across is art is art. It's all subjective, and everybody should right. play. And I agree with that. But let's not fool ourselves, Dan. When you go see a concert, there's a lot of people that pay a lot of money to see the spinning and the flamethrowers and the lasers and the backdrop, Beyonce does not have a band in front of her on the stage. It's yeah. her and the dancers. You don't see the drummer, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, okay, you can, if, if you're about all the music and that's all you're about, then go listen to it with your eyes closed. Oh, I'm not stopping you. Yeah. Anton Fig made a comment after my Letterman thing that upset me on a bulletin board. They said, what did you think about the juggling drummer? And Anton Fig on his own bulletin board said this, I screenshotted it because I'm like that. But he said, I prefer to listen to my music with my eyes closed. And I thought to myself, hmm, okay. But I went to see Motley Crue live when they opened up for Ozzy. Yeah. And they about near blew Ozzy's band off the stage. Wow. That band was on fire with showmanship. And there was fire and a gong, you know, a yeah. giant peisty gong. Yeah. I mean, I just remember that forming my vision and... Yeah, to this day, people talk about Neil Peart, right? They say he's a professional musician. He was like the pinnacle, right? The pinnacle of rock music drumming. And I sit there and I say, yeah, he spun his stick. He threw his sticks up in the air. Yeah. I remember watching Neil Peart with my binoculars throw a drumstick almost to the rafters of the TCC. I remember that like it was yesterday. And I also remember a stick hitting his china, right? When it came down, he dropped it. And I remember yeah. thinking, okay, let's go. It's ne he's Neil. He can yeah. drop it. Yeah. And then I thought to myself while I was writing this Stick Tricks and Showmanship book, <laughs> there's a section in there where I bring it up and I say, you know what? Neil Pert didn't need to spin his sticks. 
Right. Because Neil Peart was busy spinning his entire drum set. Yeah, yeah. So, I That's mean, you know, cool. we could talk all we want, but you're watching people play. And yeah. there is an aspect that, that, that needs to be acknowledged. When these kids are out there juggling, that's one thing. I get it. We want to get attention. That's kind of the game and the culture. But, dude, how are you not going – how are you going to, to, to not listen to what somebody's doing while they're juggling? If they're juggling and they can't keep time and they're not able to fulfill their duties as a drummer, yeah, I'm all for admonishing them and saying, look, dude, focus on the music. Yeah, but I'm, you're getting this from a drum. I'm a drum teacher from Tucson, and I play professionally. I've toured the world, and I get paid to play my drums. And no, I don't juggle when I when I do worship service. You right. know, yeah. like I'm a real drummer too, man. Yeah. It kind of frustrates me after a while. I know what some of the showmanship guys get because it, it it really kind of hurts your feelings. There were some comments on YouTube that there was a guy, uh, a young drummer. There's a great drummer. He can juggle too. And I was a fan. I reached out. I said, hey, man, we should hook up and join forces. And he would never reply to my emails, apparently competitive, whatever. Yeah. But all of a sudden, all his fans from his metal band came and commented on this video. And they were talking about, like, they were going to beat me up if I ever went to one of his shows. <laughs> right? What are like, they, they fourth were, grade? Right? They're like 13-year-olds, and they were coming at me, like, don't you <laughs> dare try to don't you dare try to throw your stick in the air when we're around. And I'm like, that wow. dude's... I was I was mad. I was like, that dude's throwing his sticks because he saw me. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't need to defend that. Yeah, Whatever. exactly. Let's look at some comments and see if uh, uh, we've got some questions here. Let's see. Uh, but I agree, it is a polarizing topic, and I, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting attention for drumming because ultimately. If that's what it takes, dude, if I have to go online and call some other dude out because he can't juggle, if that ultimately helped in getting more people aware of playing drums as an instrument yeah. and getting off the iPad with their thumbs and actually hitting a drum, then yeah. I'm, all for, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take one for the team if it means put the sticks in some new people's hands. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of really nice shout outs for uh, what you do. Everybody awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, people watching everywhere from, of course, in the U.S. to the Philippines, Australia. Nice. Um, and I saw Australia. Do you know Chris Bryan? I, I don't. don't. Chris Bryan, he's an Australia drummer. Now he lives in Hong Kong. You got to have him on your show, dude. This guy is a multi-instrumentalist. He can play like three time, sig time signatures at the same time on the drum set. That's killer. There and is he, he lives in Bruce Lee's hometown. Oh, wow. There is a guy uh, who's a big fan of the show, Sarley McAlpine. Thanks, Sarley, for joining us. He's all the way in Scotland. And he's asking, are there, uh, is there any really easy juggles? I can't even spin a stick. So he's like me. I can, hard, I can spin it maybe once yes. around or yes. something. So what, uh, where would be a great resource from you of easy juggles that guys like Sarley and myself can learn? I can, I, you know what, I, I would be willing, just because he's on your show and he's a fan of yours, tell him to email me privately. DM me. Okay, cool. Tell him, what's his name again? Uh, Zarly McAlpine. He's, he's in, in the comments, comments of the thing. All right, so I'm going to remind you, man. Zarly, Zarly, yeah. hit me up, direct message me and say, I was the one that asked about the easy juggle. For Dan, on behalf of Drum Talk TV, I would be happy to make him a custom lesson just for him on That's an easy awesome. juggle. That's, That's awesome. awesome. And you'll It'll be a three to five people. minute video, but I'll I'll get you a real good dialed in one. Because you know, a friend of mine, Chris Chris Cole here in Tucson, is a judge, a celebrity judge for the Tucson Battle of the Beats, and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, "You know, you should do a drum school called Chips House of Juggle." <laughs> and I and I was like, "Man, that's stupid." And then the more we thought about it, the more we're like, "Dude, we should have we should have like a little." <laughs> We should have a Dropbox folder that said the secrets of juggling and just put exactly how to do what we're doing. Yeah. We might do that. We might do that. But the basic juggle is not that big a deal. I can tell your friends and your fans on Drum Talk TV today, if you're really interested in starting to juggle, start doing three tennis balls and start working on just the basic juggling of tennis balls. See if you can get the little piece. There's a – what I was all blissed out about as a child, Dan, was when that little moment of the weightlessness, when, when you throw a oh. drumstick up in the air – there's this little millisecond of, it's weightless, right? Yeah. Get the tennis balls to see if you can get that little moment of weightlessness in time. Oh. If you can throw three tennis balls up in time, 
then I can really help you. Then direct message me and I will help you. I've got a team. And, uh, and oh, man, there's this young drummer, too. You got to check him out. His name is Brandon Jordan Brimstone, the Golden Dragon, man. He's a he's a young kid that can juggle and play drums in time. And he's a fan of mine. And we hooked up recently on Instagram. And there's there's videos of him out there playing that are blowing up, man. And it's just so crazy because he's like, dude, I learned this from your DVD. And I'm like, sweet. You know, yeah, it's just great. really cool. That's awesome. What's up, Brandon? Yeah. So, hey, we will definitely be doing this again. Hang on my line after I say goodbye to the audience. I want to inspire the audience as much as I'm able to, to go to Chip's website and email him through the website. You'll get a free PDF that he has. If you, if you, go, if you go, just go click on the free PDF. You put your email in, they send you the PDF for free, and then I get your email, and that way I can contact you too. But there's also a contact section, which is weird, Dan. How come people don't have emails? You can't email Facebook. You can't email Google, right? But right. Like, I've got an email on my website. You can hit me. If you need to reach me, you can reach me. Yeah, absolutely. Reach so you can get these things. And look at his other products that he's had out for years yeah. that are very, very helpful. And the next time we do this, we'll be doing it in person, either up here in our place or down there. You know, we'll figure it out. We'll talk hey, about Dan. That. Yeah? yeah, Dan. Real quick, can I give a pair of sticks out to one of your fans? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Is that okay? Yeah, is it U.S. only? Because remember, we have fans in over 130 countries. Um, If it's... If, okay, we, we, you're the one that has to pick the winner. Okay. If you pick a winner who's, but they got to be watching right now to win. How about that? So I have to think of how will we do this. Let me think. Let's do let's let's do a ticket thing. So you tell me the names. If, I put I'll write them down in the tickets that we can draw, or we just like maybe maybe a trivia question. Hold on, just a second. Okay, and I do see another question. I'll get to Christian in just a moment. Even better. Even better, I yeah. got only one of these left, dude. Okay. This is an Agner Drumsticks Juggle Pack. Oh, from wow. Shepherd. It's a signature model drum juggle pack from Agner Drumsticks. They come three in a pack. I love how they're different colors, too. Well, here's my white basic signature model. This is this white with neon green on them. And Agner's also, for the celebration of my book release, I think by Christmas we're going to have a custom dragon glow-in-the-dark version of Chipper oh, Drum. Wow. It's going to have a dragon on it. It's going to be cool. But I will give this juggle pack, and I will personally pay for your shipping worldwide to anybody that wins. And, Dan, you're the one that has to pick who wins this juggle pack. Okay, so the trivia question is this. And if you're watching this on the replay, it's already happened. This is for our live audience. Have to be present to win the juggle pack. Right. So the first person that answered this question in the comments, ready? And Gilbert, you got to keep an eye on this because if, if people comment like at the same time, you got to really look at the times. Who did Chip say he originally thought was his first inspiration to play drums? He had been telling people for years it was X, Y, Z, but he realized more recently that it wasn't. Who did he think at first was the first inspiration to play drums on your mark, get set, go. The first one to comment with the right answer in the comments while this is live now will win the Agner Juggle Pack. And it looks like someone commented. Let's see. Oh, we still got people chiming in while wow, I was afraid with where they're watching from. We got some that are close. So the first one looks like. I just want to make sure. Hold on. So actually, it looks like Josh Posey has it. Josh, are you kidding me? Let me make sure. Hold on. Let's make sure. Yeah, Gilbert, correct me if I'm right. The first one to comment with Buddy Rich and Animal. Referring to Animal of the Muffet. It looks like it was Josh Posey. Is that correct, Gil? <laughs> yeah, because Donna mentioned Buddy Rich, but he did not mention Animal. So Josh, he mentioned both. Yes. So there you go. Josh Posey is the winner. Congratulations, uh, man. Josh yeah. Posey won. So Josh, um, private message chip. 
with, with your address or get the email going through his website. That's even better. Send him your info and ship. Thanks so much for that little fun nugget here. That was really cool. You that's, got that's a new just from the shed. You know, you know what's really funny about that, Dan? What's, what's that? that? Josh has been a friend of mine for years on Facebook. Oh, wow. <laughs> and now you're connected at an even deeper level. And just so you know, folks, that win, real ripping. Yeah, yeah, that win is still legit because this is all spontaneous. I just blurted it out. Here's the trivia question. He was the first one to answer correctly live on the ice and chip. Well, hey, Dan, Josh, Josh is a cool dude. I'm sure you could ask him if he wants to forfeit it for somebody else in the world. You, or you know what I've learned? Let's leave it how it is. Otherwise, it's, it's going to get too complicated. complicated. Okay. Well, what I've learned is that every Drum Talk TV fan is, is a cool dude. Or a cool dude at, which is which I we agree. really appreciate. We appreciate everybody following what we do. Chip and I will be back sometime in the next month or two with a live interview again in person. This time, either up here in Globe, which I'm talking to the headquarters, or down there in Tucson, where Chip will be playing his awesome neon green trick drum set. Shout out to Trick Drums. Show off your shirt, Chip. There you go. Trick What's Drums. Up? Thank you for all the support, Kevin you, Chip. Jim. <laughs> and folks, watch for more Drum Talk TV Live interviews coming. And if you haven't seen it yet, our NAM show series is up. It was all live. Just go to the Drum Talk TV Facebook page, click on the videos album on the left, and go through that, and you'll see tons and tons, which reminds me, Gilbert, we've got to make a playlist that has only all the NAM show videos. So we'll get to that. Chip, thank you for joining us. Hang on the line. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be on Drum Talk TV. I really appreciate it, Dan. Thanks my for making pleasure. drum. Thanks for making so many drum videos and perpetuating the art of actually playing drums. Whether people dig showmanship, stick tricks or not, I think it's awesome. Thank, thank you, you so, so much in, to all the fans of Drum Talk TV. TV. Thank you for being a part of what we do. Whether it's sending in videos, whether it's watching the videos, commenting on them, sharing them, spreading the love. We appreciate it so much. We're very excited about 2019 as this is being recorded. It's only March 10th, getting the year revved up and rolling. Started with the killer NAM show coverage, 161 interviews in four days. We've got the Singapore Drum Fest and Global Drum Off coming in in August. And we've got something brewing on another continent for later this year that I can't mention yet. But sign up for our newsletter also. At DrumTalkTV.com or the button on the Drum Talk TV Facebook page. Can you all believe I said that in one breath and I don't even drink coffee? You're doing, you're doing really good, man. You're, you must have taken a social media course from somebody I know. I, I did. And <laughs> folks, if you're interested in that, click on the link that Gilbert pinned to the top of the comments. I haven't social. gotten all three of the books yet, but I bought all three of the books and I'm waiting for them. And if my career explodes like I think it's going to, I'm going to have to come back and thank you for that. Oh, definitely. The, the link, link is socialmediamarketingformusicians.com. I give a free webinar every month. And I got books and ebooks and blah, 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 blah. Thanks for following what we do. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Keep time, have fun, and be yourself. Absolutely.